around six to seven years old. I was born in Zacatecas, Mexico. And when I came over here, uh, English was my second language. So in order for me to understand what was going on, I had to rely on numbers. When I first got here, my through all my primary school, I, I, I would always try to explain how things around me worked through numbers because I didn't know the language. So in order for me to understand, I had to grasp things mathematically. And so that's kind of what led me to be STEM oriented and throughout primary school, uh, which is elementary school, middle school and high school, uh, I was always very number oriented. I was always trying to figure out patterns. If I saw a desk, I would try to see, well, there's four legs. Why is there four legs? There had to be support on every edge. Why on every edge? That led me to understand concepts such as torque uh, and uh, just different topics that later on I, I, I learned and I would look back into my childhood and be like, oh, I was already thinking of that without even knowing these topics existed. And so I think that's what uh, led me to, to, to want to pursue engineering. I wanted to see how things were built for a reason and not only understand how they're built, but improve them. couple years were a little challenging I, I really wasn't academically oriented I didn't I didn't know what was college I didn't know if I was capable of going to college I didn't know if I was gonna to go to college so up until I took physics maybe physics that's when I realized like okay there's something here that I want to know and so I remember Mr. Tarshish was my AP physics teacher and uh, I think that was one of the biggest factors that led me to, to engineering uh, he explained AP physics subjects who at that point were, were very complex for me to understand with a very simplistic approach and that was that's what led me to to be so inquisitive about how things really really work from the mathematical perspective and how how beautifully they will happen to work when the patterns the mathematical patterns align themselves um later i i got to senior year of high school and uh i knew we had we could apply to four free CSUs and four UCs. Uh, at that point, I really didn't have money, so I was uh, just going with the free free application. So as I uh, approached the end of my undergraduate career, my last semester as an undergrad, I decided to apply to graduate school. Um, I felt like there was more things that I didn't know than I knew. And so that made me feel really unsatisfied with obtaining a bachelor's. I felt like I was obtaining a bachelor's, which was which is a huge uh, accomplishment, but I still felt like there was there was more for me to, to, to learn and to grasp before I go on to the real world and apply my engineering knowledge. So what I decided to do was to apply to graduate school, uh, which was a kind of complex uh, process because I would, at the same time, I had to make sure my, my grades were good I was doing research at the same time, undergraduate research, while applying for the for graduate school, which dealt with applying, uh, taking the GRE test, uh, talking to professors for statement of purpose, uh, letters of rec, and just overall pushing yourself to, to really, really finish the whole process and not just apply to one school, apply to many schools. And uh, each school varies with the application process. So it was it was very time consuming. And, uh, and what was critical, my last semester of undergrad was uh, being able to manage my time uh, the right way. Spend some time studying for my classes, spend some time studying for the GRE, spend some time uh, doing research to keep improving my, my CV, which is uh, what you'd use to apply for academia roles. And so that was the overall process. After I submitted my applications, it was, it was I just felt like I did my, my, my best and it was in the air to see if I was gonna get accepted. And once I got my acceptance letter, my acceptance email, uh, it was it was it was a uh, oh, like a virtual reality. It felt real, but it felt like fake. I was I was still I didn't believe I it got I got accepted. It was a moment where where I felt like I belonged. It was like the the decision was correct, and I belonged in graduate school. But at the same time, it was like how did where did the time go? I, I was just a, a freshman like a, a, a week ago. And so that, that's the, the feeling I felt. But now that I'm a first year PhD student, I feel like I belong here. 
I like being surrounded by people who are ambitious about academia, who pursue ideas or, or theories even that might not seem possible yet they pursue them because of passion at the end they turn out to have a huge impact in how we approach things, especially from an engineer perspective. And so now that I'm a first year, first year PhD student, I, I, I think I did the right thing and for the next five years I'll keep improving my, my academic knowledge, uh, keep growing as a person, keep growing as a student, as a scholar, and hopefully contribute to, to my community. And uh, after this, where I see myself, I think I think I want to I want to take it up on an uh, executive role. I want to use all my engineering knowledge I'm acquiring in the, in the next five years with my communication skills to 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 make a huge impact to the general public. I feel like there's a there's always this misconception that complex technology and the general public do not go well together. And so I want to I want to kind of be, build a bridge between those two. I want to gain all the knowledge on the complex uh, technology that we deal here. And I want to translate that or even articulate it to the general public so they can benefit the most out of it without having to feel like this technology is way out of their head, way above their head. And, and hopefully being in an executive position leads me to, to, to bond those two ideas. being interested in all this fun stuff uh, that deals with engineering. Like I said, being influenced by my AP physics teacher, he, he was very good at explaining very, very complex topics at that point. Uh, it's very simple terms for us students. And so that led me to, to be interested in, into how we come up with equations. Like how is it that we have an equation to describe how gravity pulls us? So this led me to wonder how. And so here you have it, like you have to run experiments conduct many, 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 many experiments and find correlations and then derive expressions that will, uh, at the end of the day, describe the physical phenomenon behind and those expressions will then, could be applicable to many, many other things and, 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 and give you fundamental laws of physics on, phys on physical phenomena. So that's the overall idea what led me to be interested into how things work, why things work, this the way they do, and that's what made me be interested in engineering. So I currently work under Dr. Gerardo Diaz, who is the chair for the graduate program of mechanical engineering uh, here at UC Merced. And we're what we're working with right now is a novel approach for hot water production. So we're working with a novel solar thermal collector, which differs from the conventional photovoltaic systems you see on, on, on mounted on the roof of homes. Uh, those create electricity, while our collectors create heat. Uh, essentially, what we do is we put a collection of 10 to 20 of these little tubes next to each other and create one collector. And as you can see, these tubes have mini channels inside of them. What we do is that we flow a heat transfer fluid, which is typically glycol. Uh, and, and the reason why we run glycol is because it's really good at absorbing heat. It's a heat, ha heat transfer fluid. And so when we, we run this fluid through the mini ports, and then the sun is irradiating on these tubes, the heat transfer fluid gets really, really, really hot. And so at the end, once, once it runs through, it runs through, runs through, it comes out at a higher temperature than it, that it went in. And once this hot fluid is then circulated to a storage tank, inside the storage tank, there's a heat, a heat exchanger where it dissipates all the heat absorbed by the sun to the, hot, to the water you're going to consume at home. So essentially, the, hot, the heat transfer fluid runs through, it gets heated up through the sun, it takes the heat into the storage tank where it then transfers the heat collected by the sun to the water you consume at home. And essentially when you open your tap or when you shower, the hot water that's coming out was heated through the transfer heat with this heat transfer fluid. And at the end of the day, we're not 
combusting natural gas. We're not uh, using propane. We're not using electricity that probably came from uh, fossil fuels. We are heating up your water with the sun. intrigues you find something that you're not comfortable or how you understand and pursue it uh, at the end of the day in my opinion I think academic success is driven by an inquisitive mindset S pursue your ideas why is it why is it that things work this way and and never compare yourself if someone's ahead of you in math if someone's ahead of you in biology it doesn't matter because everyone has their own their own kind of path and at the end of the day, it's not a race, it's a marathon. So, so don't compare yourself and, and at the end of the day, it's work ethic over talent. Learn how to work, learn how to be a good, have ethical standards for, for your working uh, uh, tendencies and, and just stick to them. It's work ethic over talent. Don't compare yourself, everyone has their own race and just pursue what it really treats you. So my plan when I graduate is to work my way up to an executive position where I could use my engineering knowledge to make business decisions. Of course to do so I plan eventually to gain business knowledge and experience but I want to be that specialty person that a company relies on to make critical decisions for their for the whole well-being of the company. I want to use my engineering knowledge and my pretty decent way of articulating things to, to make a real impact to, to how products are seen by the general public. I want to get rid of the idea that complex technology is only for, for the rich. I want to get, I want to start making complex technology easier for, for, for kids to be interacting with and be interested to, to not only make technology for, to make things easier for us, but for the well-being of the whole planet itself. Oh, 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 oh,